The Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, mommy makeovers. With us, we have a board-certified plastic surgeon. He is Arizona's plastic surgeon. He is Dr. Cohen. Dr. Cohen, welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having all me right, here, Andy. All right. Now, uh, before we get into today's topic, for people that don't know you, tell right. us a little bit about your practice. Uh, before we get into mommy makeovers, you know, who's your typical patient? What, mm -hmm. are, what are the procedures you do? Okay, well, as you mentioned before, I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon. I do a wide array of uh, elective surgery procedures, and I would say my typ typical patients tend to be women in their 20s to 40s, but I see a lot of other women who are older than that, too. I, uh, I also see some men in my practice as well, and I do okay. basically everything. Um, like what? Well, the majority of my practice tends to focus around breast and body surgery, so I do a lot of breast surgery, including breast augmentation, reduction, breast lift surgery, I do tummy tucks, liposuction, and I do all the other uh, facial procedures like uh, eyelid surgery, nasal surgery, facelift surgery. Um, pretty much you name it, I, I, I do it, but uh, like I said before, focus of my practice tends to be breast and body. So what's the hottest procedure right now? Uh, well, one of the hottest procedures that I'm, I'm being asked about all the time is mommy makeover surgery, which is basically... Do they call it that? I mean, the patients come in and yeah, say that? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's not a technical term, but it's become sort of uh, commonly known in the public as a mommy makeover, and it's basically for women who have had major changes from pregnancies and want to get their old bodies back. They want to look beautiful again. They want to feel comfortable in uh, bathing suits and feel comfortable with their significant others. And, and they're coming in for, for help for things that they can't fix on their own. Now in Arizona, I mean, where, where you are, right? And where are you in Arizona? I'm in the Scottsdale uh, Paradise Valley area, but and it's you all grew up it's there, all, right? Is yeah, that right? I did. You went to high school there. Yeah, yeah. I went to Phoenix Country Day School, and uh, and then after uh, graduating from there, I basically did a long tour around the country for about almost 15 years for my education. You and went then, to Ivy League colleges. Let's talk a little bit about your background and training. Yeah, so, that. well, after Phoenix Country Day School, I went to Emory University, which is in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's a top 20 uh, uh, school and basically uh, very well known for its medical uh, uh, focus, you know, for pre-medical students. So I started there, and after that, I went to Tulane University, which is uh, where I did my medical school training, and that's in New Orleans. And Tulane's particularly known for hands-on surgical training for their their medical students. So I knew All I wanted right. to be a surgeon, and that's that's uh, why I went uh, went there. I wanted to get then good Dartmouth. hands-on training. Then Dartmouth. Yeah, so I, I went to Dartmouth. Myth for my uh, for my residency program training. So that's where I did my general surgery, plastic surgery. Um, I worked with some of the best uh, plastic surgeons who are doing breast surgery in the country, and you know, basically got excellent, well-rounded training both in cosmetic and in reconstructive when surgery. When did you know that you were? you know, going to be a plastic surgeon? Uh, you know, actually, it's, people always ask that, and, and oddly enough, I knew when I was in high school, probably when I was about 16 years old. Really? Yeah, it was kind of unusual, but uh, I'd seen some shows on TV about plastic surgery. I became really interested. I was always very into art and drawing and doing things with my hands, and I also liked the science aspect of surgery. I mean, so you uh, actually knew you wanted to be a plastic surgeon. You were in high school. If somebody saw me in, in high school and they asked me what I was going to do in the future, I would tell them I wanted to be a plastic surgeon. It was kind of weird back then because it, plastic surgery wasn't as, uh, you know, public as it is now, you know, it, it, it isn't on TV all the time back at that at that point. So I just knew I had a real interest in doing it. And if you'd ask me now, it's it's pretty hard to know what you want to do at, at that young age. But uh, I stuck through it and I basically uh, kept going each level of my education. I knew what my focus was. Now I know your age and you look about 10 years right. younger than yeah, your age. Yeah. And you've done what? I mean, more than, I mean, you've done thousands. Yeah, I've done thousands. Of surgeries. I mean, you've Absolutely. done a lot of yeah. procedures. Yeah, I've done, well, probably well over a thousand procedures uh, or more before I even finished my residency. Program. One of the things you told me on the phone, which I thought was good, you said, right. Randy, look at, go to my website. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was interesting the, the way you said it because you were kind of bragging about yourself. I uh -huh. said, tell me, I go brag about yourself a little bit. So, tell right. me something about you, right? I said, we're not going to say it on my show. But you said, look at the before and afters on my website. Mm -hmm. I would, you said, I would challenge you to find better photos anywhere else. Right. Well, you know. And, and, and it was true. And, and, yeah. and, and I looked. Yeah. It was, it was good work. Obviously, you're putting your best work on there, but it's still better well, than other people's it, best work. You know, when uh, when you're looking at the uh, the website, I always tell patients, you know, if you're looking at before and after, if somebody has one before and after or three or whatever, you know, yeah, they're putting up their best work, and that's not really how it should be. You should put up a wide array of your work so people have a good, realistic expectation of what you can accomplish. So I have hundreds of patient photos before and after up there, and I wouldn't say they're all my absolute best. I'd say it's a, it's a range. Some of them I would consider, uh, you know, some of my best cases ever. Some of them are very average cases. You said that you go to conferences with other plastic surgeons mm -hmm. and they compliment you. Uh, yeah, I've is that been, right? It's it's uh, it's always a huge compliment for me when I when I meet one of the experts in the field and they've seen my website and they actually say you know you have really really nice before and after photos or they're talking to me uh, you know and uh, for me uh, that's that's 
you know, nothing makes me prouder than having one of the best in the in the business come over and, and say, hey, I really like your work, and because that's uh, you know a real you know for me it's a real confirmation that that I'm I'm doing what I'm trying to do. Let's begin with mommy makeover then. Yeah. Okay. Today's topic. What okay. defines a mommy makeover? Uh, mommy makeover is basically just a general term. There's not like a specific mommy makeover, but it usually entails surgery to make somebody who's had body changes look the way they did before they started having the kids, feel good about themselves again, look young, look look healthy, and, and, and how they wish they had looked after the kids. So basically, it, it generally will include some kind of surgery for the breast, whether it's a okay. lift or reduction or augmentation, some kind of surgery for the torso, usually meaning some type of tummy tuck surgery, although it could be a full tummy tuck or a mini tummy tuck, and then uh, generally some liposuction as well, usually in the love handle areas or maybe the inner and outer thighs. But um, the bottom line, is it's not one mommy makeover. It's basically a customized procedure that I do for a patient who comes in wanting to look and feel better about themselves. So I take a look at them in the office, I evaluate them, and I tell them you know, what I think would work best for them based on what they're searching for. And what are the age ranges of these mommy makeovers? It's uh, a really good question because it, it, people think, okay, I'm mom, 30s, maybe 40s. Uh, I see a whole range of patients. You know, some patients are in their 20s who maybe have had multiple kids and they say, hey, I'm done. I, I'm, I, you know, I can't go on the beach anymore in my bikini. I want to look good for my husband and, and they're ready for a mommy makeover. Um, I see some patients who are in their 50s or 60s who probably wish they'd done it many years ago because they've been right? Yeah, well, they, they haven't been to the beach. I, you know, I've had patients who literally told me that uh, they haven't let their husband see them in the nude or you know with the lights on in the bedroom for over 10 years and uh, really? it always makes me a little sad because that's so much time that they've wasted where they could have been feeling good about themselves. Do you hear the follow-up stories? I do. You know where they come yeah. in and say oh my goodness. Yeah. That's the best part is when they come back and they're, they're looking, they have this kind of glow about them and a huge smile. They usually come and give me a big hug and say, you know, wow, I can't believe how good I feel or how good I look. And sometimes the husbands will be there and they'll be kind of smiling and nodding on the side. So, yeah, that's a really, that's probably the, the best thing about doing what I do is being able to, you know, really make a big impact in people's lives, make them happy, make them feel good about how they look. On these consoles, do they bring their uh, partner? Uh, sometimes they do. Do you encourage it? I do encourage it. I think it's a great idea to have family involvement. And, and very often I'll see patients with their significant others or husbands. Um, sometimes the husbands are a little bit reluctant about things because, uh, well, sometimes they'll say, oh, I'm worried about scarring or I'm worried about my wife looking different than she did before. Or, um, you know, they'll just, they'll say, hey, honey, I love you the way you are. You know, I don't want you to change. That's always, you know, great to hear. But the, the you know, the, the women who come in, they want to look better and they want to feel better. And, and it's not a matter of, you know, being good enough. They want to look their best and they want to feel like and look what like do how they, they say? I mean, the kids. When they come in for a mom and makeup, mm -hmm. what do they confide in you? Uh, what are their goals? What are they you know, saying? I mean, some of them, it's, it's a wide range of emotions. Some of them come in with a sense of humor and they'll say, I'm tired of rolling my breast up and stuffing them in my bra and they kind of okay. laugh about it. I have some patients who come in who can't even make eye contact because they're just so self-conscious. And that, that Is always, that right? yeah, it's, it's always a little, you know, it's upsetting for me when I see patients affected that much by their physiques. And, and uh, you know, with both those patients, they're going to see a huge improvement in how they look and feel. Probably the most dramatic changes I see are the ones who, you know, like I said, have difficulty making eye ca contact, very self-conscious. Sometimes those patients come in, you know, a few months later after their surgery, and it's like a different different person's walked in my door. They they're dressing differently. They have a like a different look about them, and they just they're like usually beaming and with big smiles, and they just can't they just can't believe how happy they are. Now you say you're changing people's lives, and right. by the way. The photos, and, and, and Dr. Cohen brought some photos, probably the most dramatic, you know, our program airs throughout the United States. Right. We have, I've had surgeons over the years, and these are, you know, and I'm trying not to endorse you. Okay. I mean, people yeah. need to know this is a real interview. No, absolutely. Uh, but these are some of the best photos I think I've ever seen. Uh, uh, maybe the best photos for my makeover. I appreciate it. But um, you say you're changing people's lives. Yeah, I mean, I always tell, on that. well, I always tell people the type of surgery I'm doing is not life-saving surgery. I'm not taking cancers out. I'm not, you know, I, um, I used to do that when I was doing my reconstructive surgery, but I'm doing life-changing surgery where somebody really can be one type of person before surgery and then they become somebody else in a much better way after surgery. It just it's just a self-esteem booster, a self-confidence increase, uh, just feeling and looking good. And you know, I always tell patients, uh, you know, that a lot of my prior patients, the biggest change they have as a result of surgery is a lifestyle change where all of a sudden they're looking good, they're feeling good, now they have motivation to go exercise, oh, good point. Um, they're okay, dieting. So they're more active now. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're doing things that they weren't comfortable doing before the surgery. And you know, I get patients to quit smoking cigarettes for the surgery. So there's a lot of side benefits from a health standpoint that come with feeling good about yourself. We're going to take a break, but let's take a look at some of the photos. Okay. Um, 
What do you have for us? All right, well, I've got some excellent photos I'd like to show you today. And uh, this is one patient in particular, a 30-year-old woman. All right, Take a look over right. there. And uh, as you can see over here, you know, very... What's going on there? I mean, is that, is that common? Yeah. Do you, you see that a lot? I mean, you probably don't see patients like that walking around the town or, or at the beach because they're, frankly, embarrassed. They're going to cover up their stomachs. Point, they're not right. going to wear two pieces. They're probably wearing Spanx or some kind of compression garments under their clothes to look decent. Is that an older woman? That was one of the reasons she came in is she felt she looked a lot older body-wise than she was. She was exercising. She was... So know, she's how old? She's in her 30s. Okay. And, uh, you know, based on how she looks in this preoperative photo, you wouldn't know. But, I mean, you, you've got this really ripply, loose skin around so the So certain the women stomach. just don't bounce back? That's exactly right. It's, there's a lot of genetics involved. So sometimes people can have a couple kids and they look great. And some people have one child and, and you know, and and this all hell breaks loose. What's that? Okay. And yeah, this happens. Yeah. And so what do you do for that? I mean, well, when you look at that, what do you do? Well, I'm, I'm looking at this abdominal area and we're seeing a lot of loose skin. So I know all that excess skin has to be removed and the rest is stretched and tightened down to give her a smoother look. But okay. deeper to that, the muscles are also bulging and, and out of position. I need to tighten up the muscle wall to uh, to give her sort of that so potential tighten, for a six pack again. Tighten the abs? Yeah. In, in a tummy tuck? Correct. So I'm not actually cutting or doing anything directly to the muscle, but I'm doing internal stitching to bring them uh, or to the connective tissue that surrounds the muscles to bring those muscles back to the midline again because they've been stretched out with the pregnancy and then we're trying to bring them back. Yeah. So it's a two. I always tell patients it's a two layer repair. The deep layer is the muscle connective tissue layer, and that that kind of resizes and reframes your core, gives you a nice curve to your waistline again. And then the second layer is is the loose skin and fat overlying that. So it's almost like you're creating the the new framework, and now we're taking tailoring the skin and fat to fit that framework. And, and give that'll you a nice, flatten out the abdomen. Yeah, so the abdomen will be flattened out. It'll give you a nice waistline again. It'll give you a smoothness to the skin again. And we're doing all, I'm doing all this by keeping the scars very low. You like the scars low, you see? I, I do. So do patients. They like to have a nice low scar line. I, I've seen some patients who have come in who had tummy tucks uh, you know, way in the past, and they'll have these scars that jut up sort of in a French bikini cut pattern or something weird. Or some some patients will come in complaining of a Is sort of a regular technique? scar. Is that just technique? Older techniques? Uh, you know, I think some, some of it's based on technique. Certainly there's variability patient to patient, but in general, the goal should always be to keep the main scar as low as possible so that patients can wear a you know lower cut jeans or a bikini that'll cover the whole scar. So, you know, as you can see in the photos on the website, you don't see the tummy tuck incision because the scars is kept so low. So let's take a look clothes. at her after. What's going okay. on with her? Okay. So, well, you know, as you can see here, I mean, it's a Very huge nice. improvement. And now all of a sudden we've gone from this older, loose, sort of unfit looking abdomen. Now she looks like she's in in incredible shape um, because I've revealed the the frame that she had underneath tightened up the muscles and taken out that extra skin so I've done all these things that she couldn't and now all that exercise she'd been doing before surgery and certainly the exercise she's gonna be doing after uh, will be visible to, to, to everybody else who's, who's looking at her so as you can see I mean she really looks tremendously better than the before photos, but I think one of the takeaway points in this particular patient's case is that she told me she looked better after surgery than she ever looked before surgery. So, you know, in some of these cases, we're not just making them look the way they did before surgery. Some of these patients look better than they than they did even before the kids. Now, what about just liposuction on a small area like that? Look at the before and after again. You cannot get that level of smoothness of the skin and tightness with liposuction alone. So on that it's after, that is possible. Yeah. Uh, you have to remove skin to get those kind of results, and you have to know which type of tummy tuck and be able to apply it correctly. Okay, good. Now we're going to take a quick break. We sure. come back, you brought more photos. And by the way, we saved the most dramatic photos for last. I mean, some of these are really, uh, are they doctored up a little bit? Uh, no, absolutely no, not. Good. That's okay. totally uh, unethical. I so gotcha. all the photos are as is. You're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're going to take a quick break when we're back. More about the process of the mommy makeover, the evaluation, what to expect uh, during and after the surgery. We'll be right back. You are watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, mommy makeovers with us. We have Dr. Cohen, board certified plastic surgeon. And uh, so we're back. Tell us uh, now, mommy makeover for right. people just tuning in. Correct. Who's an ideal candidate? Well, mommy makeovers are for the people who have had pregnancies and are no longer happy with how they look. And despite their best efforts with diet and exercise, they can't get their breasts mm -hmm. or tummy looking the way it did before the, the kids. So it's they feel like it's time to take care of themselves now and they want to look and feel their best. And so a mommy makeover for these patients includes some kind of breast surgery to make the breast look as nice as possible, whether that's a implant or a lift or a reduction, and then some type of a 
abdominal surgery, usually a full tummy tuck, sometimes a mini tummy tuck, combination of liposuction for many patients in the love handles or thighs or wherever really they need it. As a recap, this before and after, very interesting. Yeah. So, you know, you saw the front view already. I really wanted to show you the side view because I think it's very important to see that a tummy tuck doesn't just affect how you look from the front, but it also affects the bulginess of the abdomen. So as you can see in, in this photo over here, um, and I'll show you the, the after as well, you know, this is a woman who, you know, nice. she's, if she's wearing a tight little dress at a cocktail party, she's not going to feel comfortable before the, the surgery because she's going to have this, uh, they a lot of times call it a pooch, or they, they sit down yes. and have this extra skin bunching up, or it's not just in bathing suits, it's in, in their clothes, you know, and, and a lot of these women will wear compression garments under their clothes to try to hide it, but it doesn't always work, or it really limits the type of clothes they can wear. So after the surgery, as you can see, there's no excess skin, there's no excess tissue. Now she can wear the tightest dress in the world, and she'll look fantastic. Now, there's like a lot of women that before. probably want tummy tucks mm -hmm. uh, that don't do it. What's their biggest fear? Um, the incisions? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a wide array. I mean, some patients are worried about anesthesia, just going under anesthesia. I always tell them that the risk of anesthesia is a lot lower than the risk of driving your car for a couple hour road trips, statistically okay. speaking. Um, some people are worried about the scars, and, and you know, I always assure them the scars are generally kept low, and over time they get nicer and nicer. It's always a very big trade-off for the overall reshaping for, for the scars. And these surgeries are done at your center. Correct. So, you know, when I started Talk my about practice, safety for yeah, I mean, absolutely. When I started my practice, I knew from day one I wanted to have my own surgical center so that I could control everything that happens there, make sure it's as safe as possible and done with the highest standards that, that fit my standards. So, all right. um, so all of my surgeries have been done there. I've done, uh, you know, well over 1,200 um, surgeries, then a lot of those were combination surgeries, so literally thousands of different procedures at my, my operating room. I only use board certified MD anesthesiologists who are all screened by me as the, you know, the best in their field. Okay. And, uh, and basically, you know, everything is done to maximize safety. And after surgery, we have a recovery center that's just across the uh, um, literally about 30 second walk from my office where patients can recover for uh, a night or two because I never want people to go home the day after uh, the day of a tummy tuck because I want to have nurses that can keep an eye oh, that's on them. Good. Yeah, it's it's a it, they'd be fine if they went home for the most part, but I, I like to have the extra level of safety, having nurses checking their vital signs, making sure they're comfortable, make sure everything is uh, you know going along smoothly, and that way I can check the patients multiple times before they head home. Okay, now uh, let's move to the breast because mm -hmm. one of the things you do, and we can't show the breast photos; they're on your website. By right, the way. right. Yeah, there's there's no Very shortage. Nice, by the way, no shortage of breast photos on my website. But, that's but, for sure. But, but the lifting. Let, let, let's start mm -hmm. there. I've ta I told you I've talked to guys that said Randy. I don't like doing some of these breast lifts. Mm -hmm. Very tricky, take a lot of time. And on the phone, you said, well, I like to do it. Yeah, and why is that? Because I think there's no one of the most dramatic surgeries you can do is a is a breast lift surgery when women have these uh, breasts that have become deflated or loose skin and they're hanging down on their abdomen and they literally just can't do much with them. You know, even even in a bra, it's hard to sometimes they say the loose skin kind of spills over the, the edge of the bra or my bathing suit. So these surgeries can be very, very dramatic uh, changes for patients that they're, they're usually t uh, completely thrilled with the, the results. Um, it's a challenging surgery and a lot of surgeons don't do it because they're, they may be nervous about it or, or they just don't have a lot of experience. But I've done so many hundreds of these surgeries, I, I've kind of seen every variation there and, and uh, I feel very comfortable doing one stage augmentation breast lift. Or and your incision, you say you almost never use that anchor scar. Uh, you know, for full lifts, a lot of surgeons will resort to what's called an anchor scar, where you have a scar that goes around the areola, a line that goes down the breast, and then another one that goes under the breast. And I find that the vast majority of my patients, the, the biggest scar I need to do is a lollipop, where you can avoid that big under the breast scar, which can, can cause some problems. In and around, you know, the nipple area. Yeah. You said you really have a close attention to detail there. Uh, well, Elaborate on that. I mean, how is your technique a little bit different? What separates you, you know, in your I, view? I would say that, in general, I'm spending a lot of time making sure that everything looks as good as possible. So I'm doing all dissolving under the skin stitching. I'm doing multiple layers of stitching to make sure there's not a lot of tension on the skin to keep the scars as thin and fine as possible. With the areola, I know some surgeons will go a little bit faster and the, the shape may not be as, as uh, you know, maybe a little different size areolas or a little bit irregular, and I'm basically, if, if things don't look as perfect as I can get at the end of the surgery, I'm making some more uh, little refinements to the areola to make sure it's as, as you know, round as possible, as even as possible, make sure they're the same size. Do so. patients ever say that they're surprised with the outcome, that it's better 
than what they expected? Do you I, hear that? I do, I do hear that a lot, where patients say, oh, I was so worried, and, and it really it looked even better than I was hoping for. My breasts never looked this good, even before I had kids. But there's a lot of women, though, that avoid the surgery. I have a friend mm -hmm. of mine who's mm -hmm. avoiding the surgery because right. of the incision. Right. What do you say to these kind of people? You know, I always tell them that, that uh, number one, shape is the most important thing. If you have a nice shaped breast, the scars are not going to be as big a deal as you think they are, because you're going to have a beautiful, perky, round, youthful looking breast. Number two, most of the time, people aren't seeing the scars because all the scars are, being, are designed to be hidden within a bikini pattern. So if you're wearing a small bikini, if you're wearing a bra, a dress, whatever, you're not going to see those scars, but you will see the improved shape of the breast. So they're going to look fantastic in, in clothing, Absolutely. in a bathing suit Absolutely. and things like that. Yeah, and my goal not only is to get them looking great in clothes, I want to get them looking as fantastic as possible in the nude as well. Okay, now the other photos. Yeah. And these are dramatic. Okay. These are mommy makeup. Yeah, these are these are some probably uh, I would say another notch up in terms of how big a change this patient has undergone. So, you know, as you can see before, this patient has a tremendous amount of loose skin and excess tissues. And uh, she almost has like multiple rolls of skin. Uh, she couldn't stand it. There was no way for her to hide that. And how she old is this person? This patient's in her she's in her late forties, uh, probably now might be in her early fifties. So, you know, as as I said before, sometimes you have the stereotype of people getting mommy makeovers. She looks like 30s. an old woman right there, by the way. She looks You're like... You're saying late 40s. That's young. Yeah. When you look at that body, you'd, you'd think she's a lot older than she is because of the loose skin, the wrinkles, and everything else like that, the droopy-looking belly button. I mean, this is a woman who just doesn't feel comfortable with her body in any circumstance. Certainly, she's she would she told me, I wouldn't be caught dead in a bathing suit at the beach. I mean, this... So they say that. Okay. Yeah. And then, but beyond that, she just, she can't even find clothes that fit well just for regular daily uh, activities, you know, not not even talking about swimming pool Do they pool ever beach. say, Doc, I mean, have you ever seen, seen anything this bad? your life or am I too far yeah, gone? You know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes they'll say, uh, you know, they, they always say funny things like, oh my God, this is going to be the worst you've ever seen or don't let me break the camera or whatever. And I always tell patients, <laughs> look, I guarantee you're not the worst that I've seen. I've seen such a huge range from fairly minor problems to extremely severe problems. But um, the bottom line is that everybody feels the same way. They're unhappy with things they can't fix by themselves. And, and whether it's a small problem or a big problem, it's still going to have an impact on, on what they wear in and what they mind, do. In your mind, when you look at this before, yeah, when you look at this woman, do you think, oh boy, this is going to be good. I mean, yeah. do you see the end I result? I do. And, you know, patients can see me smiling during the consultation where they, they see how excited I am because I'm looking at them and I'm saying, in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, I can't believe how big an improvement I'm going to be able to get for you. And I'll tell them that. I'll say, you are going to be extremely dramatic change and, and I can't tell you how excited you're going to be after surgery. And they can see the, they can see the enthusiasm. I mean, they usually get kind of extra excited to, to do it okay. themselves at that okay. point. Okay, so her after. Yeah. Let's take a look at that Yeah, after. so I mean, look at the difference. I mean, it's just oh my incredible. So I, I literally got pounds of skin. Um, That's and, 25 and years younger. Yeah, I mean, it, right? easily. It, uh, like I said, she probably never looked that good. And, and that extra, it's, it's a little hard to notice, but all that extra at the skin at the bottom is actually pubic skin that was hanging over her, you know. So that's pubic bottom. skin that's right pubic, there. extra pubic skin, so I get to lift that for her and, and improve that whole uh, area as well as just the stomach area, the, the love handles. She doesn't have that muffin top anymore that, that women are always complaining about. Uh, you know, it, it just completely transforms how her body looks. And now she can wear the dresses and the clothes that she wants to. She doesn't have to worry about wearing compression garments and, and she now can this go to the is beach. a huge change, by the way. Huge, huge change. In a person's life. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean... Night and day. You know, every time I see her in the office, she has a big smile when she walks in and just, you know, I can't. She How says, many years I can't does somebody it. put up with something like that before they do something about it? You know, I mean, in her case, decades. I mean, people, you know, some people know after they're done having kids, they're like, I'm going to the uh, surgeon getting this stuff fixed up because I, I hate how I look. And then other patients are very reluctant or very nervous or just didn't think it was even an option for them. And they may live with it for years and years. And all of a sudden they see uh, a friend or they see a picture online or something, uh, you know, similar to them that they saw the before and after. And they think to themselves, well, why can't I do this too? I want you to look at this side view of this woman, okay? Take a look at this before, and you see this t tremendous amount of skin overhanging her waistline. And she also has another level of skin that's overhanging her belly button, and you can't see in this picture, but there's more skin overhanging the pubic area. And she just doesn't want to live like this anymore. Look in the after photo, you're seeing it's basically smooth from it's the cage all the way down. Almost all looks those, touched up on the side. It, it does. It looks like you basically just took a knife and, and sliced yeah. everything off, but obviously it's a, a much more complicated than that, but it's, it's literally like I said, pounds of skin and fat removed and retailored, not to mention the deeper layer of tightening, which we talked about earlier, the muscle tightening to flatten the abdominal wall so that everything takes on a nice hourglass figure and she looks All right. feminine again. What about again. a tough economy? You know, somebody says, uh, you know, is this necessary in a tough economy? Yeah, I mean, people always ask me, you know, is, is your business turned down with the economy getting so tight? And I always, uh, I've been amazed, but actually, it's, it's, if anything, I've gotten busier. And I think one of the things that people don't realize is that when you're out looking for jobs or in the workforce, if you 
you look and feel your best, you're going to project confidence and people are going to Good be point. more likely to either hire you or, or promote you. And so these patients are seeing this as an investment in themselves to uh, look and good, look wow. good, as good and feel as good as possible in order to be as viable as they can in the, the job market. If somebody's watching this, of course, they go to the website and, and see the more graphic or revealing photos. Right. Um, but do you do the consults? Yeah, absolutely. So when patients, one of the one of the things that patients love about my practice is they see me every single time they come in. So they see me for the initial consultation. They see me for the uh, the day of surgery. They see me for the follow up visits. So basically, I'm always available because for me, the, you know, I feel like I'm going to do a better job of keeping an eye on patients and making sure things are coming along than anybody else out there. Okay, so. good. You you say you you do almost everything. I mean, you don't like to I do. It's it's a little bit sometimes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a bottleneck in my practice because there's only one of me to go around. My my office but manager. You do because you're a perfectionist, or you do uh, yeah, I just I, I do it because I feel like patients are putting their trust in me, and I need to give them as much of my time and, and uh, attention as I can to make sure that their path from start to finish is as smooth you're as exhausted possible. Exhausted when you get home. That's a little bit tiring at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, I end up talking about uh, you know a lot of things with a lot of different patients, but they appreciate it. And for me, it, my enthusiasm stays high because I'm excited about what I can do for these people. And, and when I see these follow-up patients, it's always a big, uh, you know, it's just a big. Um, yeah, exciting day to see all these ex, you know, excellent results. This is how you get through. your kicks. I mean, you like the after. I mean, yeah. You like when I, they tell you. I love to operate. I think operating itself is very enjoyable. And even more so, I like seeing the changes that I can uh, create for people physically, but also uh, emotionally and, and just uh, in terms of their confidence when they come in in the office. Final message to somebody watching this they don't like the way they're aging, they don't like their body. Maybe they lost 100 pounds. Mm. Yeah. What's your recommendation? I mean, the bottom line is, if you're not happy with how you look, there are options or things you can you can do, and that's what I'm here for. So basically, I invite patients to come into my office. I'm I'm going to give you a personal evaluation, take a look at everything. We'll discuss what you want, what you don't want, what I can do for you, and just know that you don't have to live with a body that you're unhappy with. It's not for everybody, uh, but if if it's something that really bothers you things can be improved dramatically as you're able to see and you know if you look at the hundreds of photos on my website you'll see many examples of different patients different ages and you probably will be able to find somebody that looks like you who you know you can see well what can I expect from a before and after good. standpoint good I want to thank you yeah. for coming on very interesting Plug good stuff in. good stuff and uh, we'll have you back on the show to talk about some of the other things you do in the future appreciate it all right thank you very you've been much. watching the wellness hour the leader in medical news and information I'm Randy Alvarez if you would like to see this interview again online you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com just put in Dr. Cohen or put in mommy makeover you'll find him there for now i wish you could help thanks for watching the wellness hour the leader in medical news with your host randy alvarez